God bless you guys, brothers and sisters. I am here with another dream. And um, of to me, of like the end times of what we're dealing with right now. And I pray that you take all of my dreams to the Lord. Right? If I'm looking over at this direction, it's because all my notes are on this side. Uh, so let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. God, amen. All right, so I have a very important dream to share with you all and definitely the scripture I'm looking at is just way is really really powerful. All right, so this is how this dream happened. Like I, um, it happened on the 29th of September to the 30th, um, and then the experience happened all the way from the 1st of October to the 3rd of October. All right, so this is what happened. So I went to sleep and I woke up in this uh, spiritual realm, and um, I was looking in front of me and then it was an angel beside of me um and i knew it was like the uh i knew it was an angel of wisdom or uh, understanding or something like <laughs> something like that it was an angel that had brought wisdom with it that was standing next to me and so i was looking ahead of myself and the angel was telling me uh two degrees i needed to learn so I'm going to read my notes. It says, um, this dream, again, this dream took place on the 29th of September, and I started my fast on the 30th of September in a three-day uh, a three day drive fast until October uh, the 3rd. Okay, I, I see. I'm glad I wrote my notes because I did not mention that I was on a fast as well. So um, I was on a three-day drive fast right after this dream. And so let's see here. And I did, and I also found out an interesting fact. I did not know that September 20. 9th and 30th was the day of atonement and that fits into this dream as well um even though i had no idea <laughs> so it says um there were two degrees that the angel wanted me to know that i needed to understand about the spiritual realm i can only remember one which is the degree about how a demon increases in power demons that uh, attack us are based off of levels of degrees every time one succeeds they grow by 50 degrees this life is this is when um something i remember what the angel was saying this life is about the child once a child is born an angel is assigned and so is a demon if that demon succeeds and the child dies and go and goes through this uh, they go through a spiritual tunnel and i started to see this manifest in front of my eyes when i was in the spiritual realm i saw a child or an example i don't know if it was a real child or not their whole life they grew up everything and then it was a uh, demon after demon kept coming to them their guardian angel was there trying to help them but it was like um every time one demon succeeded in their get, getting them angry they would grow and then they would bring and that demon would bring more people or or more spirits to attack them and then if they grew if they succeeded in getting them to to lust and and the and these individuals would allow these demons into their lives because you you have to understand we have free we have free will and God has given us um, authority over all the earth. So it's just like, and that includes uh, these these demons. You have to invite them. You have to allow them. So if you fall to temptation, then these demons come in they, and they succeed by continuously tempting you. So this individual was getting tempted by anger, depression, um, uh, like um, lust and all of that. And so the demons increase, the, the, the amount of demons increase, and then the degree in which strength they had increased. So um, I saw this person and they ended up dying in their sin. And then I saw their soul. It was like a little white light. Um, it was a little, it was a soul and it went down into a tunnel of the earth. And then it was an opening that, uh, th that was in the earth and it looked like a huge mouth and it went in to the, um, went into the mouth. And it says, let's see here. Um, uh, this life is about the child. Once a child was born, the angel is a sign and so is a demon. If the demon succeeds, the child and the child dies and goes through a spiritual tunnel into the into the earth that leads to Sheol. Sheol looks like, and this is my and this is me talking at this point. Sheol looked like to me the mouth of a whale. It looked huge. It looked like a huge spiritual fish. And so this soul went into the pit of its stomach, right? And so then this pit, of course, I knew it was really dark down there. It was, 
it was hot and it was full of pain I knew that that was in the belly of the whale or the huge fish and so um, then as I was looking at this I saw the eye of Sheol and it was like a it was pitch black. It would just look like so much hate in that eye. And it was looking directly at me. I, and it, uh, the outside of the, the fish looked like it was like a gray, black, beat up, bruised type of animal. And so um, then as I would, and then I was, as soon as I made eye contact with the whale, I was snatched out of the spiritual and I was back in my body. But when I, I was physically laying down sleeping, but my spirit got up and I started to, it was like a hedge around me. Like I literally, I, I, like I was, um, I was not at my home. I was at my friend's home. I was spending the night over there, but there was a, um, there was a red cover placed on me. And then there was a hedge around me, like protection. And then when I was up, I started praying and um, when I, pr I said the Lord's Prayer twice, and I didn't have my anointing oil with me, um, so in those to some people it's gonna sound disgusting, but I used my spit and I anointed my head like that, and um, in the spiritual, and I said the, uh, the Lord's Prayer because I felt like right after I saw this, uh, right after I saw Sheol in the in the in the earth, I was going to get attacked. So as soon as I did that, the hedge was around me, red cover on me, and I did my, I, I anointed my head. I laid back into my body, and when I laid back into my body, I was back with the angel, and I was collecting information in the spiritual. And so this is, um, I wrote my notes. I said I was gathering information, and as I gathered information about the spiritual realm and how it worked, a demon with cat eyes attacked me. The eyes were red, like the inside of the cat eye was red, and the outside of the ball of the eye was black. And I saw a, I saw long white teeth, and my chest clenched. So I prayed in tongues, and I felt better immediately. I felt a release because it felt like something was trying to attack my rib cage, but. Um, as soon as I started praying in tongues, that hold, that power, that hold, whatever was trying to be placed on me was loosed. And I woke up at 522, September 30th, also in the spirit, uh, again, that I just I just wrote down in my notes, also in the spirit, I anointed my head um, with my spit in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, said the Lord's Prayer. And, I, and then when I woke up at 522, I said the Lord's Prayer again, and then I re-anointed myself. Um, then I heard in my spirit, I heard, um, Joel 2, uh, Joel 2, 14. So, um, when I opened my Bible to Joel and, um, I started to read, actually, I, when I first opened to Joel, I saw the, the first scripture that said, blow the, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in the holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness and morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there hath not been ever like, uh, neither shall there be any more after, even the years of many generations. Now, when that was the first thing I saw, then the second thing I saw was actually Joel uh, 2.14, because I, I was looking at my Bible app, I wasn't looking at my, uh, at, my, at my Bible. So that's why I saw those first two scriptures. But then it says again, it says, who knoweth if he will come and return, uh, who, who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even the meat offering and drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet, Zion, and uh, sanctify a fast and call a, um, a solemn assembly. So I knew when I saw uh, sanctify a fast, I knew that the Lord wanted me to go on a fast. Me personally, I knew the Lord wanted me to go on a fast because the, that jumped out to me and after seeing what i saw shield like basically hell in the middle of the earth and gathering information in the spiritual i knew that i need to go on a spiritual cleansing because i just what i just witnessed so then i continue to read and it says gather the people sorry about that it says gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the elders gather the children and those that suck the breast let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet 
Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage in reproach, and the heathen shall rule over them. Wherefore shall, uh, wherefore shall they say among the people, Where is their God? Now, this section right here, when I found out that it was the Day of Atonement, the day I woke up was the Day of Atonement, this makes sense, okay? The repentance, the fasting, all of that. And then um, um, the spiritual connection between the well and uh, the way Sheol looked, it reminded me of the story of Jonas because when Jonas was in the belly of the well, he went through a Thanksgiving and... and, and um, he went through thanksgiving and repentance and a, uh, and it was going through affliction in his soul okay and then we have a even greater connection to that because even Jesus said in Matthew 12 40 it says for as Jonas was in three days and three nights in the in the well in the whale's belly so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth the heart of the earth is where Sheol is and that's where the spiritual well was and that's why it was a reference between these two scriptures and it may and then I was thinking to myself um this Confront, like I was like, why did I see a whale? And it makes sense because God speaks in symbolisms, uh, symbolisms. Forgive me, symbolism. When um, He is speaking of um, anything of anything great. So when it comes to the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, Sheol being a whale, like it kind of it made sense, you know. And then you have the great red dragon or the snake being Satan. All of these, all of these animals. And then you have like the church. You have the lambs that follow God, or you have the you, you know you have the sheep and you have the goats. You know what I'm saying? Like his all God is always using an animal as a reference. So when I seen the spiritual hell of Sheol being a whale, and then it connected to Jonas, the Day of Atonement, and also what Jesus. Jesus was talking about him being in the um, being in the earth uh, for three days and three nights, just as Jonas was in the belly of the well. All of it made sense, and so that gave me my time frame on how long I was going to go on my dry fast, right? And then after that, I continued to read. Um, Joel 2 18 it says then will the Lord be jealous of for his land and pity his people yea the Lord will answer and say unto his people behold I will send ye, you corn and wine and oil and ye shall be satisfied therewith and I will no, and I will no make I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen but I will remove far uh, far off from you the northern army and will drive him into the land barren and desolate and his face towards the east sea and his hinder parts utmost utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his savor shall come uh, uh, come up because he hath done great things fear not O land and be glad and rejoice for the lord will do great things be not afraid ye beasts of the field for the pastures and the uh, wilderness do spring for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree, and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will and he will rain, and the latter rain in the first month, and the flood shall be full of wheat. Yeah, no, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, and the canker worm, and the ca uh, ca caterpillar, and the pe uh, palmer worm, and my, and my great army which I set among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now I'm going to stop right there because after I had got this part of um, the scripture, when I, I got a confirmation sent to my phone and it was Daniel 7. And it, again, it was talking about the end of days. Joel 2 was talking about the day of the Lord and the promises of God's blessings and how he invites his people back to, uh, to repentance. But it also talks about the Lord will pour out his spirit. Now, that is the last part of Joel 2. And so when I went back to sleep, I was met with um, a few people 
And it was, again, there was an angel beside me who carried wisdom with, I don't know if it was her or he, I don't it's just, I just know it was an angel. And the being, the angel, had wisdom. And so, I feel like it was a she angel. I really do feel like it was a she. Uh, but, um, let's see here. The people I saw had markings on their face. It was one in particular. It was a girl. She had a um, she had some ruins written, some ancient ruins written right here in the the corner of her head. And so the angel handed me, and it's twelve thirty three on my phone uh, on my computer. That's so crazy. And the angel handed me a key, not a physical key, like to open a door, but like a, a map key to break down what the symbols meant on the side of her head. And then I also saw another individual who had a line going right here with like stars or something in this area between their eyes and somebody else that was a male and he had a symbol somewhere on his face. But I was only, I only had enough time to break down this girl's, her first symbol right here on the side of her face. So... Now, when I, I, I have a picture of the symbol, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like and how I drew it. Uh, it's horrible, but I remember I woke up like 5 a.m. So this is why, <laughs> this is why it looks so bad. But um, this is what the symbol looked like. This is the first, when I first drew it, right here, this is when I first drew it. And this is when I uh, drew it a second time to try to remember what it looked like, right? So then, um, it took me like two, like, I want to say from that, from the third all the way up until yesterday to try to break these symbols down. And I had a confirmation for what it meant, but then I wanted to go into prayer even more to make sure that it was correct. So I found some ancient Hebrew ruins that looked like these little scribbles. And I found the modern version of these uh, Hebrew symbols that look like this. Let me see. After, let me get the thing. That look like this. And so this is the closest that I found to these symbols, and it breaks down to meaning the first W symbol that you saw. Let me go to my notes really fast. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to read my notes. It says, the, second, uh, the symbol in the second part of my dream means the Lord is pouring out his spirit. The girl in my dream had it written on the side of her, on the side of her head, and a woman named Wisdom gave me the key to understand the ruins that were written on her face in ancient Hebrew. The W shape means Shin, um, the fire of God, the consuming fire of the Holy Spirit. The X symbol or swirl in the middle represent the connection between heaven and the divine, uh, heaven or the divine, the creator and man. And the line un and the line under these symbols or the J, um, the J line represents man's heart, right? And I said I feel like this is a, a confirmation that uh, that I feel. This is confirmed when I continue to read the scripture spoken spoken into my spirit. The second part of Joel 2 speaks about the pouring out of God's spirit, while the first part speaks about repentance, fasting, and coming the coming day of the Lord. So, okay, the first symbol, Shin, when I looked it up, like I told, and we had a study on this before because I talked to you guys about the three days of darkness and how I was writing in Hebrew there in that dream. Um, Shin, again, means the consuming fire, a fire of God, the Holy Spirit, um, and the three branches, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, were the three connections of the W. Um, the X or swirl that you see, oh, sorry, the X or swirl, this one, that you see, represents, literally, it says the connection between the creator and the creation from above and below. It, um, yeah, from above and below, let's see here. Representing the higher world and the lower world, and con uh, the connection and the separation of the both. Um, let's see here. Uh, its name, uh, the name of the symbol is Alpha. Represents the creation of something, of uh, the creation of something from nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm tripping over my words, and um is timeless, spaceless, and, and is present everywhere. So it's a continuous thing, it's always existent. And um, 
Then you have the last connection with is lamed or lamed is L A M M E D and it's also spelled L A M E D in two different sites I found. And so that symbol represents a man's heart. And so um, and it also represents the connection between again man and um, a man's mind, soul, and spirit. Uh, it's also uh, where the humans learn and where our existence is, and it is a connection between man and the Creator. So you have the consuming fire, the Holy Spirit, the three, uh, the three in one. You have the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit, Father, Son. All are the W that's being connected by the swirl in the middle. So the consuming fire is con from the divine to the creation is being connected to the last symbol, which represents our heart of man, where we learn our mind, body, and so our mind, our mind, our spirit, and our soul all together. So that's what these three symbols represent that I drew. And that was on the side of the girl's face. I'm gonna show you one more time. That was on the side of the girl's face. That's what the, that's the symbol I drew in the dream. And this is the connection of the symbols that I found later on in the breakdown of those. I'm going to leave a link so you guys can read it for yourselves. Um, and then I'm going to read the scripture. And so it says, Joel 2, um, 28 to 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall see dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants, upon the handmaidens in those days where I pour out my spirit. And I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the, and in the earth. Blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness. And the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that who, that who Whosoever shall come on the name uh, shall shall call on the shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in the Mount Zion and Jerusalem, yeah, and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now that was the end of the scriptures, and this was I can't believe. <laughs> I can't believe because I've seen it. But it's just like, in essence, I can't believe that all of what I'm learning right now, it just makes so much sense now. And it's just like, we all know that he will pour out his spirit in the end days when he comes. And then I'm seeing blow the trumpet. I saw it twice. And so I'm just, and then like, I didn't even know it was a day of atonement when I was called to go on my fast. I just did. And I was going and I was praying for, you know, the body of Christ and uh, going to pray for cleansing and all that stuff to be right with the Lord, etc. And I'm just, I'm blown away. So I share this with you guys to, um, for you to go to the Lord and ask him to pour out his spirit upon you while, um, while we still have time here before he does pour it out on all flesh. Because God, uh, the, the Father, okay, how do I say this? The Lord has been showing me recently that the body of Christ, not everybody has the Holy Spirit. And so the utterance of the, the, the evidence of the Holy Spirit is the utterance of spe like the speaking in tongues. Okay. And if you cannot speak in tongues right now, then you need to go to the father. You need to go to, you know, go to the Lord and ask him to pour out his spirit upon you so you can receive the Holy Spirit. So you can be able to speak in tongues. So all of his children can have connection to him, speaking to him directly. Okay, that doesn't mean that you, just because you don't can't speak in tongues, that doesn't mean that you're not saved. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is God is has this gift to all of his children and he wants all of us to have it because in the end he says he will make sure everybody has it anyway. So we are supposed to use this. Like this is something that's in the scriptures that is freely given and you see in Acts as soon as the people were converted over to um to uh converted and uh were believing in jesus christ, jesus christ they received the holy spirit and um the same thing that happened um in ephesus i'm gonna get into that too because god gave me a dream about that in ephesus um the church some of them were baptized by john but they didn't have the holy spirit but they believed in jesus christ you know so they got re-baptized and then through paul they received the holy spirit 
So it's just like, you know, this is something that I pray that you guys take to the, the Lord and that you, you know, I cover this entire message in the blood of Jesus. I cover all my messages in the blood of Jesus. And I just pray that you guys take this seriously. And um, I pray that this helped. So God bless you guys and have a um, have a great day.